Um, the project is the culmination of a successful partnership over the last year and a half. Um, in working with both Kerry and Dermot, and we worked long hours on this, in putting the project together and in working with the likes of Roger and Siobhan and a range of people down in Interreg, we eventually got the project. And then having won the project, then the daunting task of actually implementing it hit us. And in hitting us as two Irish partners, we're new to this, we're new to the Interreg region. What we're not new to, though, is the procurement section and the procurement in the public sector. In Ireland, public procurement is worth 16 billion. In Ireland, we've been working in the sector for five years now in developing skill sets in strategic procurement. In Ireland, we've gone through a major shift in economic crisis, and in that shift, there's an aggregation issue of whereby public sector procurers want to spend less with SMEs and get more value. So it's opportune that we have this chance to influence the public sector and maybe to influence the politicians in the way that they observe and work with local economies. I'm cognizant also of the fact that this project is sitting inside the EU. And we mentioned the five billion of Wales, but the reality is there's 2,000 billion of an EU spend on public procurement. So whatever skill sets we develop, both in Wales and Ireland, those SMEs, those small indigenous suppliers that wish to win business, also develop skill sets that can compete on the wider European basis. And I would hate us to lose sight of the fact that that's also a potential here for small companies to grow. Recently, we've appointed a new minister for procurement. A strange role. But somebody who has taken it to task and in taking it to task, he came over to visit Francis Maud in Whitehall recently. And Francis Maud announced in calling all the top suppliers in that he was going to make savings. And he did. Not only did he make savings, the savings vary between 10 and 30 percent depending on the sector that you're in. The unfortunate part is it's only with the large suppliers. And what they've forgotten in the middle of all of that was the small local suppliers who are winning business. Our minister seems to be doing the same thing. And last week, he announced that he's calling in all his top 30 suppliers. And somewhere within the next 100 days, he hopes to save X 100 million in doing the same thing. The fear that I have in looking at the project that we started is that we may lose sight of the objective because of the political ramifications and the political will to try to bring about cost saving. And I would dislike that to happen. I particularly would dislike that to happen because local business is what makes a local economy. And politicians need to remember that local business is what makes votes. And it's a very strange conundrum that they tend to forget that when they get into power. I raise this issue because it is an important issue for us to remember that both public buyers are responsible for delivering public policy. And public policy is about delivering local economy and jobs. And therefore, this project itself is not just about educating the public procurers, it's also about job creation. It's about actually bringing jobs back to local economies and trying to deliver some value back in. At the launch in January, I looked around in Ireland and I looked at a group of people similar to yourselves and I made the point that there were many people in the room that I was going to work with over the next two to three years, not realizing that I would actually be working with them within the next two to three months which is what has happened. Not only have we ran a series of networking events since we started the project, we've actually got a lot of Meet the Buyer events that other bodies have picked up on. So we've had the Dublin Airport Authority come on board and run a Meet the Buyer event with all local suppliers. This week, we've had Dublin City County, our Dublin City Enterprise Board, run a similar session on Meet the Buyers, bringing public procurers together with small indigenous suppliers, saying, look, this work is happening. And more recently, I was on the phone just outside before I came in, and I was talking to a colleague who got a phone call from Belfast. And they're even interested in the work that's going on. Because the issues that face us both between Ireland and Wales and within the Interreg region here face many countries. And Dermot alluded to the fact that this is an extremely important project from the EU perspective. What we learn here, what lessons we learn, will be easily translated out. We also need to be aware that there is a consultation period just closed in April, and next week, on the 30th of June, the EU will issue some level of knowledge around that consultation period for the changes in the directives. Those changes, we hope, will bring some, some 
relief to small to medium-sized companies. Hopefully, they will actually recognize the problems that are in place for small to medium-sized companies. If not, we maybe have a six-month window, both as a project team and as people working in this sector, to try to bring about that recognition. Because come January, February, the proposal for the new directives will be sitting in front of us. And if they do not contain elements of small indigenous supply, local economy recognition, we may have to wait another 10 years before we see major changes across the sector. For me, I look at the food, I look at the drink, and I sort of say to myself, coming as an Irish person, it's about networking. And what I'd like to do is really finish with that thought for you that this project is about networking. It came out of people who networked, who met, and actually put together a project. It's about a team that networks, meets, and talks. In the steering group, it's about putting people in a room who've never met before. That's both buyers and suppliers, third sector interested parties, but both sides, both from Ireland and Wales, who come together and talk. And the most important element of a buyer-supplier relationship is the conversation. We've heard the remedies directive. We've heard the directives and feedback. The only point I would remark to you is that unless you're engaged in the conversation, there is no feedback. And I mean that both from the buyers and the suppliers. It is important that in the three years that we have to deliver the project, that we develop the networks of both buyers and suppliers to talk to each other. That, to me, will be the real benefit. That will be opening up a marketplace that is very different. That will bring about a greater understanding of the public sector and also of the small indigenous suppliers' needs. That, hopefully, will result even very, very tiny from us actually having a drink together and talking. Thank you again.